Hello folks, today I am going to discuss about symbol table which is a key concept in the field of compiler design. I will touch base some of the important questions related with symbol table namely what is a symbol table, when does this table gets created during the compilation process, who is the consumer of this table, what do we keep in this table and finally how do we implement it. So what are the criteria for designing an efficient symbol table? So let's try to answer these questions. So what is a symbol table? Basically it is a data structure which is used by the compiler or the interpreter to keep information about the various source code constructs. For example, here is a code snippet for the programming language C. It starts and ends with curly braces and inside the braces there is a declaration of an identifier called mk and this identifier has been assigned a value. Throughout this discussion we will refer to this code example to explain some of the key concepts. So for this code example symbol table can be used to keep information about the identifier mk but what type of information we are going to store we will discuss it shortly. Next question is when does this table gets created? So the compilation process can be broadly divided into two parts. The first one is the analysis phase and second is the synthesis phase. So this table is created by the analysis phase of the compiler which is also called the front end of the compilation process. In the analysis phase it is the parser or the semantic analyzer which creates most of the information in the table because they have the whole picture of the usage of an identifier like uh, scope and all. Lexical analyzer may also create the symbol table entries but they cannot do much beyond storing the lexing values of the tokens. Uh, for example here in the above code the lexing value for the identifier in the first line is the string mk itself. Who is the consumer of this table? So uh, it is used by the synthesis phase of the compiler to generate target code from the intermediate code representations. It is also used by the analysis phase to detect semantic errors, uh, to do the type checking and other types of checks. So what do we store in the symbol table? What does it have? Uh, let's look at the example code snippet again. It declares a variable named mk which is of type int. Also it is assigned a value and if you look closely everything is inside a curly brace and so this defines a scope for the variable mk and its usage. This scope limits the usage of variable mk inside the curly braces only or in other way we can say that the variable mk which has been assigned inside braces is the one which has been declared in the first line. So an important aspect of this table is that it passes the information of declarations to their usage. So whatever we observed about the variable mk can be stored in the symbol table in the form of attributes. For example the information we can keep about the lexim mk is that it is a token of type identifier, its type is integer which defines the size of the variable mk which will be uh, 4 bytes in case of a 32 bit machine and its memory location would be on the stack. So we store many other information as required like dimensions, bounds, if for example we declare array of structures or identifiers. Also storage locations like where we are going to create the identifier be it on a stack or heap or some statically allocated global storage locations and many other information which the compiler designer may think is required. So this table facilitates the usage of identifiers with respect to scope of its declarations which is other way of telling what we already observed in the first bullet itself. So now comes the important questions how to implement a good symbol table. So a symbol table must support two basic operations. 
inserting attributes or information about the source code and other is to search for that information in it. Compiler relies heavily on the symbol table to look for any attributes for various checks and a symbol table can be very large as the source code program size increases. So the search and the insertion both must be fast. Also symbol table should be able to tell compiler about the correct scope of the identifiers. So in general a symbol table is maintained per scope of the code. And when compiler keeps symbol table per scope, the table may be structured in hierarchical way where root of the tree can be a symbol table for the global scope and children down below can be symbol tables specific to the various local scopes. Generally a symbol table can be implemented by an array or a linear list or a binary search tree or hash table. In arrays insertion can be very fast keeping track of the current end of the array but search can be of order n. Similar is the case for linear list but with some more memory consumption. Binary search tree can implement insertion and search in order log n. But hash table is the most popular data structure to implement a symbol table where search can be done in constant time. So folks this ends our discussion on symbol table. Thank you.